Hello, Pastor MacArthur. My name is Chi. And I had a question regarding the standard of like church, not necessarily like church service, but how it's structured, because I've seen a lot of things in between church and Bible studies start to exist over COVID, like maybe group chats online and it'll maybe be like 100 people or 50 people. But I know there's things in scripture about the roles of men and women and, you know, these types of things. But I don't know. I don't know because I've heard words like parachurch and I'm just not sure if people understand. I guess because I have friends involved in it and I want to talk to them about the standard of church, even though to them it's not church because it's not at a church building, even though they're all talking about the word and having Bible studies. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like people would think there's just anything flies if it's not in a building, you know. No, really, really good question, and it's part of the, the culture of young people. Look, Zoom church is not church. It's not church. It's watching TV. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing about that that fulfills the biblical definition of coming together, stimulating one another to love and good works, coming together, uh, singing uh, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody to the Lord, um, sitting under the Word of God, praying together, being led by those who preach the Word and open the Scripture. The definition of a church is crystal clear in the New Testament. We see the picture of it. They came together on the first day of the week. They worshiped the Lord. They prayed. We know it was the Apostles' doctrine, prayer. Um, it was fellowship and it was the breaking of bread and the Lord's Supper. So the, the church is defined clearly. And it's the communion of the saints. It's fellowship. It's partnership. The term koinonia means a coming together, a unifying together. It doesn't even function unless people are mutually, as we were saying this morning, mutually using their spiritual gifts for one another and, and meeting the wonderful fulfillment of all the one another's. How many times in the New Testament edify one another, pray for one another, rebuke one another, build up one another, on and on, one another's, one another's. We're, we're only the church when we are together. And the church is the church when it corporately worships, when it corporately prays, when it corporately hears the preaching of the Word of God. Those are the things that define the church. Um, I was listening to the latest in the podcast that Austin Duncan's been doing at the MacArthur Center, and uh, it just it reminded me from the discussions that he was having with regard to this particular church, how the church is this communion of people, this fellowship of people whose lives are all blended together in a profound expression of love and unity. And that does not happen in any kind of video environment. I don't think it even happens in a quote-unquote church where you're watching a video of a pastor, because it's very important that that man's life be exposed and visible and known to everyone. So. When you talk about parachurch, you're, you're talking about some arm of the church or some function of the church that aids the church. For example, Grace to You, which uh, is a media ministry of teaching the Bible, and we do that all over the world in multiple languages, providing all kinds of books and all kinds of sermons for download. And it's, uh, that's parachurch in the sense that it comes alongside the church. We aren't the church. We don't want grace to you to be the church. The Master's University comes alongside the church. The Master's Seminary comes alongside the church. Even uh, Grace Missions International, TMAI, comes alongside churches all over the world to provide strength for them. But they're all arms of this church. So you, you, you're in... I think you're in violation of the whole intent of the Lord and how He wants His people to work together if you're not fully involved in a church under the leadership and headship of pastors to whom you have given your life to be cared for, instructed, loved, nurtured, and uh, to whom you owe some accountability. 
Okay? Thank you. You're welcome.